Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is make sure this video is picking up. Which it didn't take more than several seconds from now. Okay, good. Check on your temperatures to fine. Okay, so I just integrated the notes I took off stream today into this design document. Now I'm gonna remember to save it. And now I'm going to uh, revise the PvP section. Okay, section number five, PvP. So the outline uh, looks fine. The agenda. I generally want to make the rating of capital cities be less than balanced. It does reward you something, by the way. You get a... Oh, wait, that's right. It doesn't reward you if anything anymore because I moved on from the game. But regardless, I still want to be less than balanced, even if just for the role-playing servers. I want to be... I want to make... I want to make it be harder to unintentionally receive dishonorable kills. <coughs> I want to make losing battlegrounds be worse reputation per hour than trying to win battlegrounds. I want to re-implement old, old Alt Track Valley, expand upon it, and make it work. I want to make Alt Track Valley be less imbalanced and have less exploits. Of course, it was imbalanced in favor of the Horde back in Vanilla Classic. I, I want to discourage people from flag creating a Warsong Gold for easy reputation. I want to remove terrain exploits from all battlegrounds, including the Alterac Valley bridge skipping exploit, and of course also the uh, waterfall exploit thing that the Alliance pre-made did in uh, Alterac Valley, but I'll get to that later. I want to prevent pugs from, pi from fighting pre-mates and vice versa. I want to revamp rank-based PvP gear rewards so that the reward system is comparable to that from raiding. So that there's a lot of variety of rewards, and so that the rewards can fill every equipment slot provided that your rank is high enough, and not just half of your equipment slots. I want to enable game masters to punish players who grief or cheat in certain ways by lowering their PvP rank even if they are one point away from rank 15. I want to give players another reason to not sit around in capital cities by making players have to actually go to where the battlegrounds are out in the world in order to cave them and to enter them after getting to the K. I want to add rank 15 to the game so that players have a means of obtaining a pseudo legendary weapon without raiding. Pseudo legendary weapons without raiding. Because some specs use more than one. Now, since twinks hate having non-twinks on their team so much, and for more important reasons, I want to separate twinks from non-twinks in, in battlegrounds. Uh, since people hate having low-level people on their battlegrounds, I'll split the non-60 non-twink brackets in two. And, I'll enable, and I want to enable people who like PvP and hate leveling to level by PvPing, though intentionally slowly. Though intentionally, pretty slowly. To make sure that people who just want to hit 60 don't ruin level 960 BGs. By. Don't ruin 960 BGs. Yeah. Copy. Paste. Did I even remember to put the part about changing the PvP ranking system in? Not that, not that, not that, not that, not that, not that, not that. Jeez, I, for I completely forgot. Oh, wait, that's right, it's in a different section. Replace the old and broken PvP ranking system with a new one. That's basically rated battlegrounds. See, though this is 
this one is covered. Oh, this is covered in section number 5.1. Uh, new PvP, PvP ranking system. I think that's what I call the section. Hold on. New PvP ranking system. Oh, lower KC. Lower KC. Copy. Paste. Okay. So, world PvP changes. There is no more honor or honorless target debuff. This applies to both world PvP and battlegrounds. For more information, see, see section number 5A, new PvP ranking system. Oh, not 5.1, but 5A. Okay. Forgot. Okay. Yeah, I'll go over that later. The back door to Ogremar was never carved out of the rock. Air types used to fly over the rock. Thunder Bluff's back elevators are removed, and the bottom half of the entrance is under today's sewers or wall off, except for a thin slit at the bottom for sewers, which is too small for players to, which is too small for players to get beneath. The air taxis could fly over that wall since the top half is not walled off. These changes are here so that were will be made so that concerning the rating of capital cities, rural PvP is more is balanced. Sorfang can be skipped anyway. Even though he's level 63 now, and I mean, I mean Mike Troy, he can still skip him. All civilian non-player characters are, are immune to all area of effect attacks for player characters and their minions, even while aggro like totems are. This is to make it harder to accidentally get dishonorable kills, especially in raids. You can no longer initiate a duel without a, an item called a dueling standard in, in, in your inventory. Dueling standard is a white item. A dueling standard is a white item that can be bought from a general good vendors, a general goods vendor, as a base vendor price of ten copper, and it is not consumable, and it will not bind to your character. In order to initiate a duel while you have a dueling standard in your inventory, simply click a nearby player and type slash duel, or right click a nearby player and select it from the drop down menu. That is the duel option for the drop down menu. The other player does not need to have a dueling standard on their person to be dueled. I'll add a vendor that sells dueling standards to every level in the five zone that lacks a general supplies vendor. An interface option will be added that blocks dueling initiations from players of your faction, and another will be added that blocks dueling initiator, and another will be added that blocks dueling initiations from players of the opposing faction. These will be turned off by default. So I don't really want to contract that. Yeah, sure. Yes, these will be turned off by default. When enabled, these interface options will prevent the relevant people from initiating a duel with you, a duel with you, but it will not prevent you from initiating a duel with them, provided that they do not also have the relevant interface option enabled. So people can't grief you by spam dueling you. You can uh, select the options to not let them duel you. And the dueling option, and this dueling standard thing is just so that the flag doesn't come out of thin air. It's for immersion. This is done to add a bit of immersion to the game. The flag doesn't magically appear out of nowhere now. An experienced locking NPC will be added to Stormwind City, Ironforge, Darnassus, Orgrimmar, Thunderbluff, and the Undercity. This non-player this non-player character will, if you so choose, lock your lock your experience that is prevent you from getting experience for a small fee of ten silver, which will prevent you from getting experience until you talk to the NPC. I should decapitalize that. I want to decapitalize it. I prefer the way it looks. Yeah, 
He has an XP. An experience lock in NPC will be added to the capital city. Since NPC will, if you so choose, lock your experience for a small fee of 10 silver, which will prevent you from getting experience until you talk to the NPC to unlock your experience again for free. These services will not be offered to level 60 characters. The act of locking your experience will kick you out of every battle count cake at, will kick you out of every battleground cade at your own when it gets locked, and the act of unlocking your experience will kick you out of all battleground caves at your end of time. In case you manage to be in one anyway. And prevent you from caving from every battleground until you level up no display duration. With this with this, with this debuff being undispellable, persisting through death. Logging out, and server resets. Copy. Paste. People with their experience locked are put in different battleground caves than everyone else is. Of course, this will have a considerable effect upon... Whether or not Twinks get to cave for Battlegrounds or not, but if they get in one, the Battleground will be of a higher quality than if the change was not there, unless you just want to stop people who have worse gear than you. In which case, go fuck yourself. Or go World PvP, even better. All players will gain experience points upon killing another player equal to one-fourth of what they normally gain if they kill the non-elite NPC either enemies players level which is an intentionally small amount of experience such that it isn't enough for people who just want to hit level 60 to K for 960 battleground Which means that 960 BGs will be filled with people who actually want to PvP. A questionable change. Guard Thomas, Guard Byron, Guard Parker, Guard Burton, and Guard Howe, who if I recall correctly are the Red Georgian Mountains, will not be civilians. Their being guards takes precedence over their being quest givers. General battleground changes. Not in chat right now. Slash follow will not do anything while either player is involved in a battleground. This is to make it harder to gain bail battleground reputation without deserving it. You'll be able to do war games like a classic not plus. They let people hold organized PvP events that they can make non spontaneous videos about. Without getting any end game rewards out of it. Looting a player's insignia, corpse, will no longer generate gold out of thin air if it hadn't before. Instead, the gold will be taken from the player whose insignia, corpse, you loot, and if a player doesn't have enough money to generate an insignia, then their corpse will spawn without one and they'll be unable to run back to their corpse. This change is made to very slightly decrease inflation. Marks of Honor will now be unique, 70, instead of the unique, 20. But the game will not mail you Marks of Honor if it tries to give you so while you're over the limit. That is, you can have up to 70 at a time across your backspace and bank and mail. Well, backspace and bank, instead of up to 20 at a time. Yeah, not mail, because it's not going to mail you Marks of Honor if you're over the limit anymore. At the end of a battleground, if you lost, your bonus reputation will be halved, and you'll lose battleground reputation, equal to half of what you gained in battleground before the bonus is at the very end. Gained as in, since you went in there. That is like, so you wouldn't lose as much if you joined halfway through the battleground, as you would if you joined at the start. Anyway, during Battleground re weekends, reputation gains will only be doubled if you win. Players who are backfilled into a Battleground will receive bonus reputation equal to half of what they would have received if they are there for the whole game. 
And, of course, this bonus reputation will be halved if you lose the battleground. Yeah. All terrain exploits will be removed from all battlegrounds when I get around to it. Because people generally hate it when a person caves through a battleground, it will be an at or near the minimum level for that battleground's bar bracket. And because most people simply decide not to cave for battlegrounds at or near the bottom of a bracket's level range, all not experience locked battleground brackets shall be divided up as follows 10 to 14 and 10 to 19, Warsaw Gold Jolie. 20 to 24, 25 to 29, 30 to 34, 35 to 39, 40 to 44, and 45 to 49. Warsaw Gold Trail Rossi Basin only. 50 to 54, 55 to 59, and 60, Warsaw Gulch, Arabi Basin, and North Rock Valley. As such, experience locked battlegrounds will still be split up into 10 level brackets instead of 5 level brackets, and the 50 to 59 XP locked North Rock Valley will have its NPCs used. Will have its NPCs used the levels and stats of the NPCs in the 55 to 59 North Rock Valley. Upon losing or deserting from a battleground, you will lose experience equal to 5 6 of all experience gained during that battleground, except from quests, which cannot de-level you. And therefore, it has a min and therefore it has a maximum experience loss of... Yeah, based upon that. Every 20 to 40 seconds, chosen at random, the game will check all people in a non-rated, non-experience locked battleground to see if everyone's XP is... Experience is locked. If anyone's experience is locked, then the people with their experience locked will immediately get kicked out of the battleground and a report will be filed by the game. To Game Master, of course. Copy. If you do twenty, if you do more than twenty nine of the same battleground and not experience locks non sixty battleground bracket while your PVP rank is zero or higher, then the next time you level up, you'll get something in the mail from the relevant battleground faction, a care package that contains an amount of gold to emulate questing, random stuff in screen items based on your class level of item level equals character level plus five, also to emulate questing, and battleground only consumables, so I don't have to give you even more gold to emulate questing. Based on how much of your level you gain in that battleground, excluding battleground quests. A person who gains their entire level within a battleground will gain exactly two green items by doing this, with lower amounts giving either one green with a chance for two greens, or zero greens with a chance for one green. The care packages for Ultrac Valley will require doing it a minimum of five times to get a care package. Furthermore, you can do a repeatable quest to talk to a battleground guy after you've done the quest to win the battleground. This repeatable quest causes the care packages that you receive to, to have a chance to contain a buy on pickup manual that increases your primary profession skills and first aid by 5 points with a 100% chance if you got your entire experience bar for that level out of that battleground. The repeatable quest lets you pick which primary professions you get manuals for, if any. This way, you don't have to go out into the world to train your professions if you just level via PvP, and you can just level your professions via Battleground so that you can buy and use Battleground professional only consumables. Battleground versions of professional only consumables. That is, consumables that require a profession to use, such as all throwable alchemist potions and all engineering explosives. Next up, Battleground K changes. I'd love to get rid of Crossroad Battlegrounds, but I doubt that the Battleground systems I've set up for this World of Warcraft Classic Plus would work without Crossroad Battlegrounds. Until I can figure out a way to make it work without Crossroad Battlegrounds, they're staying. <sighs> I... Really want to get rid of Crossroad Battlegrounds, but I have to think of something that would make it work first. If I don't have Crossroad Battlegrounds, then people are going to do all sorts of shady shit to gain the system to get a higher rating 
in the rated battlegrounds than they're supposed to get. And I don't want that happening. That's more important than there not being cross their own battlegrounds. Okay, so next up. Level 60 players can choose to cave for rated or non-rated battlegrounds. People who cave for rated battlegrounds will never, under all circumstances, be paired against people who cave for a non-rated battleground. And in order to cave for a rated battleground, you must cave as a group of 10 for Wars on Gulch, 20 for Ultrak for Rafi Basin, or 40 for Ultrak Valley. For more information about rated battlegrounds, see section number 5A of the PvP ranking system. You can only be k for one battleground at any time. In technically k for a second battleground will not kick you out of the first k and will not k for the second battleground. You must leave the first k before you can enter the second k. If anyone is added to or removed from a group while said group is k as a group for a battleground, then the group any person removed from it will be removed from the k even if the k has already popped. And so on. And anyone in the battleground will be removed from the battleground. In the group in the battleground. That in the battleground. And the removed person will be removed from the battleground. Copy... Now, how am I going to denote that in the change log? Hmm. How about copy, paste, quotation mark, quotation mark? Uh, don't say. Not worth saying. So, next up. You can no longer pay for a specific instance of a specific battleground. All that will be seen in the list of battlegrounds is quotation mark, join a battleground, quotation mark, and quotation mark, join a rated Battleground, quotation mark. Though that will be grayed out if you're level 60. Join a rated battleground. I mean, if you're not level 60, you'll be grayed out. Join a rated battleground. Next up, when your K pops, the number of the battleground won't be displayed. And neither will it be displayed inside of the battleground, nor anywhere else for that matter, though game access will still be able to see the battleground's number. You cannot see the lips of enemy players in the battleground until the battleground is over, nor can you see how many there are until the battleground is over. In order to prevent, uh... I forgot. I forgot what I forgot, but it's an important change, if I recall correctly. All battle masters will be removed from all capital cities. All battle masters will be removed from all capital cities. Battleground weekend NPCs will not be able to KU and instead it will tell you the head of the battleground when spoken to. Will just tell you the head of the battleground when spoken to. This change is made to increase immersion and get people out to the world. Oh yeah, now I remember it. This soul. No wait, I forgot again. Never mind. Well, rather the reason I thought of was a completely different reason for a completely different thing. Anyway, so just look. Yeah, so this change made to increase immersion, get people out to the world, telling you, making you actually go out into the world to talk to the battle masters to get into the caves. There will no longer be confirmed or denied buttons for entering battlegrounds such as K-Pops. Instead of this, the pop-up window will tell you that you may enter the battleground by going through the entrance portal located in the Baron Sash Ashen Vale, the Rocky Highlands, or the Ultrak Mountains. This change is made to increase immersion. When any pops group K for a battleground, is there two spaces there? No, there's one space. All members of the group and of the group or raid must be in or behind the battleground's instance portal before any players in the group or raid are let into the battleground. At which point, they are all simultaneously teleported into the battleground. 
Failure to do so of any 60 second time limit results in nobody in the group or regulating to enter the battleground. This change is also made to increase immersion. When a group carries up for a rated battleground, they'll be forced to randomly wait for 1 to 10 minutes, not displayed, before the quake system intends to match them up against another team in order to prevent people from coordinating matchups of certain teams. You won't with select teams. But teams of their choosing, to make it even more clear. You will not be told when the game begins to attempt to match you up against another team, but only when the game matches you up, finishes matching you up against another team via the case popping. After somebody is eligible to be put into a non-group battleground K, that someone will be forced to wait between 0 and 180 seconds, chosen at random, to enter the K, which also delays the K acceptance time limit, by which time the K's for your buddies that also came for the same instance of that battleground and are not supposed to be there with you might have expired. The in-battleground starting timer for each non-rated battleground before each non-rated battleground begins will be three minutes longer than before to accommodate for the above change. Alterac Valley Changes Alterac Valley Marks of Honor shall be awarded as such, based upon how the objectives your team did or didn't do, would, or does, affect how much rating you would get if it was a rated battleground. A win with 120% of the objective, 12 marks. A win with 110 to 119.9% of the objective, Gets the 11 marks. It went with 100% to 109.9 RP percent of the objective. 10 marks. It went with 90 to 99.9 RP percent of the objectives. Gets the 9 marks. It went with 80 to 89.9 RP percent of the objectives. Gets the 8 marks. It went with 70 to 79.9 RP percent of the objectives. Gets the 7 marks. It went with 60 to 69.9 RP percent of the objectives. Gets the 6 marks. A win of 50 to 59.9 RP percent of the objectives gets you 4 marks. A win with less than half of the objectives gets you 4 marks. A loss with over 40% of the objectives gets you 4 marks. A loss of 40% of the objectives gets you 3 marks. A loss of 20 to 39.9 RP percent of the objectives gets you 2 marks. A loss of 5 to 19.9 RP percent of the objectives gets you 1 mark. And a loss with less than 5% of the objectives gets you zero marks. The blue items offered by the quest to kill the enemy general will no longer be offered to players. Having Ice Barb Spear and Bloodseeker available at level 50 would, be, would make leveling be much easier than it needs to be at those levels. These subzones and associated quests that are removed after patch 1.5.0 will be put back into the game. With the sole exceptions of the non repeatable quest to kill Korak the Blood Ranger and the body part turnings, not due to the body part turnings of disgusting, thin skinned people, but due to the body part turnings discouraging players to farm reputation instead of going after the objectives. This, is, this does not mean that all track value will once again have herbs and ore, nor does it mean that items such as frozen steel vampires will once again drop in all track value. The only win condition in all track value is if you have the the only win condition in all track valley will be to have both the alliance if horde or horde if alliance general and korak the blood rager be dead that's right you have to kill not one general but two generals per battleground you can only lose in all track valley if the last general left standing is not your general in this case Correct the Blood Ranger counts as a general, which does indeed mean that the Alliance and the Horde can both lose in the same battleground. Archdroid Renferal will Renferal Archdroid Renferal will, upon receiving enough storm crystals or equivalent items in Winter Act Trolls, stop accepting all quest turn-ins, which will be accomplished by making her despawn and, re and be replaced with a different non-player character of the same name. Primalist Sir Loga will, upon receiving enough blood to summon local or the Ice Lord, stop accepting all quest turnings, which will be accomplished by making her despawn and be replaced with a different NPC of the same name. Stormpike slash Russell Fram slash Wolfighter Commander will. I mean, Stormpike and Frostwolf, Ram or Wolfrider Commander, and Wolfrider Commanders will, upon receiving enough Ultra Ram or Frostwolf hides for the cavalry assault, stop accepting. 
Pine Turnins, which will be a cause for making him despawn and be replaced with a different NPC of the same name. Similarly for the Steel Masters and Ultra Grand Slash Frostwolf Turnins. Of course, these will prevent exploits. This will prevent people from forcing the NPC to stay there. Of the same, of the NPCs, faction from forcing the NPC is there. Copy, paste, paste, paste. Copy. When a wing command, when a wing commander receives enough metals of flesh, he or she will cease to accept quest turnings, which will be accomplished by making them despawn or be replaced with different different NPCs the same name. Wing commander Sidor and Goose will have four different copies: one that accepts twelve turnings, one that accepts only alliance or horde turnings, and one that accepts only winter X turnings, and one that accepts no turnings. Paste. Uh, excuse me. Copy paste. When the Stormpike slash Frostwolf Quartermaster receives enough supplies to begin a ground assault, the NPC will stop accepting turnings, which will be called to make a these one degree place with a different NPC of the same name. Pace. This will prevent people of the NPC's faction from forcing the NPC to stay there. You can no longer hike the around, around the Alliance's Bridge in Ultrak Valley. They put an obstruction near the top. This is a fixed and exploit. The Horde has shoveled the snow that's around the front of their base's fences and possibly done some mining as well. As such, it'll no longer be possible to enter the Horde's base without either going through their front gates or teleporting inside of a Frostwolf Antigua or a Rune of Recall. This is to make it a bit easier to defend the Horde's base, but only a bit. Other terrain exploits such as the, bunch such as the Bunker exploit and the Dunvaldor Backdoor exploit will be fixed as well. All Alterac Valley Lore... All Alterac... Valley, war masses will be linked to each other and their respective generals are no longer and will no longer be able to be pulled individually. Furthermore, all war masses and their respective generals will immediately evade upon leaving the room, even into, into the sort of hallways leading into the room, and all allied towers, while not destroyed, will grant all war masses and their general a stacking undispellable buff that increases their movement speed and damage health by 50% and their maximum health by 100%. Drek'thar and Vandar and it are intended to be impossible to kill with three or more of their towers being non not being destroyed, while they are intended to be possible to kill with two of their towers not being destroyed with 39 people with little to no lag and full buffs and consumables, so long as no enemy players interfere. Their health and damage will reflect these intentions, and according to the Obliterator, will be about as powerful as they are without towers. Drek'thar, Vandar, and Korak the Blood Ranger will gain an ability that is comparable to Shield Wall, which will use a 66% health and a 33% health, lasting for 15 seconds per use, making it harder to just burst the shit out of them. Uh, I forgot why I'm doing that, though. All, all, all the NPCs in Altrak Valley, are, other than Wintrax Trolls that are not named Korak the Blood Ranger or Resurrect, who is the champion of the Wintrax Trolls, will be immune to all forms of crowd control, including even disarmed interrupts and movement impairing effects. Ivan's the Forest Lord will be summoned in a more defensible part of the field of strife than in vanilla. Ivan's the Forest Lord and local lord the Ice Lord, when he decides to summon them, will attack either the Winter Axe Tribe or the Frostwolf Clan slash Storm by Guard, depending upon which dialogue option he sees to summon him. After he defeats the general of the faction that he is told to defeat, he'll fight his way to the other enemy faction if he has not won the battleground yet. The air assaults require different turnings to assault the Winter Axe Trolls than they require to assault the other enemy faction. To attack the Winter Axe Trolls, the air assault requires only 1 to 20 act Winter Axe Soldier to signate slash flesh, turn into side door goose, to begin the aerial assault against them. The ground assaults will attack either the Winter Axe Trolls or the other enemy factions depending upon which dialogue option is used to begin the ground assaults. The cavalry assaults will attack either the Winter Axe Trolls or the other enemy faction depending upon which dialogue option is used to begin the cavalry assault. 
Completing Master Rising's All-Seeing Eye will show your faction where all Winter Axe trolls and players of the opposing faction are on the big map and mini map at all times via an undispellable buff, buff that persists through death and is given to backfillers and falls off in the battleground ends. Teleporting or being summoned while holding Master Rising's All-Seeing Eye will cause you to drop it where you teleported from or get summoned from. Got summoned from. Took the summon from. Yeah, that's better word. Getting the Storm Pike or Frost will fade Earth from the respective Rank 1 and Signet Cave will give the relevant faction a plus 5% damage buff that persists through death until the end of the battleground. Said buff will also be given to backfields if to join all after the buff is given out. You can get this banner whether, you're, whether or not you're on the quest to do it. And you can get the banner once per player per battleground, but only the first turn for the battleground for your faction will grant your faction a buff. That way, people are actually going to do, uh, are not going to gift themselves by doing that quest. Armor scraps will drop in half the amount that they did before, on average. Any amount of armor scraps required to upgrade your soldiers will be halved. Stormpike Soldier Blood and Storm Crystals will have their drop rates halved, but half as much will be needed to summon Ibis the Fourth Lord or Local Lord the Ice Lord. You'll see why in the raid and and the section on Raiden Battlegrounds. Stormpike Soldier's Flesh, Stormpike Soldier's Flesh, and Frostbolt Soldier's Battles will have their drop rates halved, but half as much will be needed to begin the aerial assaults. Alterac Value Reputation now, as I have non repeatable quests, shall be awarded as follows. During Battleground, killing a non rated Killing a non-allied general grants 194 reputation for a general. Killing a new alliance or horde captain gives 62 reputation. Killing Regrelec, Winter Axe Hero, grants 62 reputation. He is the Winter Axe Captain. Killing Lieutenants and Commanders grants 6 reputation each. Killing Air Repu Killing Air Masters grants 2 reputation each. Killing Alliance and Horde Guards grants 2 reputation each, which stops at honor. Killing Players grants 1 reputation each, which stops at honor. Killing Winter Axe Trolls grants two reputation each, which stops at honor. Why the fuck is this? This should be one reputation each. Made killing Winter Axe Trolls grants one half as much AV rep as before. Okay. Killing Ibis, the Forest Lord, or Local Lord, the Ice Lord, grants 62 reputation, like killing a captain. Having 25 animal hides, as opposed to turning them in, grants 12 reputation. Having 20, oh wait, not as opposed to turning them in. Uh, having 25 animal hides turned in, grants total reputation. Having 25 animals in stables, grants 12 reputation. Armor scraps grant one reputation per 20 scraps turned in. Stormpike or Winter Axe Soldier's Blood or Storm Crystals or the uh, new thing to the Winter Axe Trolls is equivalent. Grants one reputation per item turned in. Stormpike slash Winter Axe Soldier's Flesh slash Frostwolf slash Winter Axe Soldier Metal slash Insignia, which is turned into Sidor slash Goose. Turn, turn into side or slash goose. Grants one reputation per item. Whoops. Copy. Stormpike Lieutenant Slash or Frostwolf Ziggy Frostwolf Lieutenant's medals, which is turned into Vi4 slash Jess Door. Turned into Viper slash chest or, or grants two reputation per item turned in. Stored by commander slash or fossil commander's medals turned into Ickman slash Mulbrick grants three grants three reputation per item turned in. At the end of the battleground, enemy general dead grants you 18 reputation per general. Allied captain kept alive means 62 reputation. Enemy, for each enemy bunker tower destroyed, you gain 12 reputation. 
For each enemy lieutenant or commander killed, you gain 6 reputation. For each bunker or tower controlled, you gain 6 reputation. For each graveyard controlled, you gain 6 reputation. For each mine controlled, you gain 48 reputation, which is intentionally a relatively large amount. The Winter Axe Trolls will... Now, on some more changes. The Winter Axe Trolls will attack the Alliance and Horde's territory if left unchecked. They will play one or of three strategies chosen at random at the beginning of each battleground. Strategy number one. Constantly attack the Alliance and Horde at the same time, ignoring all objectives other than capturing graveyards along the way. Strategy two. Get both mines and then turtle until they reach 150 quotation mark supplies, quotation mark, and then switch to strategy number three. Strategy number three is go for all of the objectives. Every 30 seconds, all war drag trolls will gain plus one to their quotation mark supplies, quotation mark, which cannot be looted in any way, shape, or form. For every five allies or horde players or NPCs there, for every five allies and horde players and NPCs that are slain by the Winter Act tribe, the Winter Act tribe will gain plus one to their supplies. For every two Winter Act trolls that are slain, not including Resurrect or Korak the Blood Rager, All Winter Axe Trolls will lose one of their supplies. Each mine, when controlled by the Winter Axe Trolls, will, every 30 seconds, grant all Winter Axe Trolls plus one of their supplies. The Winter Axe Tribe can have a maximum of 150 supplies and a minimum of zero supplies. Rezrek, the hero of the Winter Axe Trolls, will periodically grant the Winter Axe Trolls a plus 20% health buff, including himself a Korak the Blood Ranger. Upon reaching 50 supplies, all Winter Axe Trolls in that battleground permanently gain plus 100 stamina, plus 800 attack power, plus 200 spell damage, and plus 300 healing, and Corky Blood Rage will cast General's War Cry 10% on all Winter Axe Trolls. The permanent buffs are also applied to newly respawned Winter Axe Trolls, but do not, re but do not apply to Resurrect or Corky Blood Rager. Upon reaching 100 supplies, all Winter Axe Trolls in that battleground permanently gain another plus 100 stand at 800 attack power to the spell that is the healing. And Korok the Blood Rage will cast General Swore Cry 20% on all Winter Axe Trolls. The permanent buffs are also applied to newly respawned Winter Axe Trolls, but don't apply to Resurrect or Korok the Blood Ranger. And upon reaching 150 supplies, all Winter Axe Trolls in that battleground permanently gain a third plus 100 stand at 800 attack power to the spell that is the 300 healing. And Korok the Blood Ranger will cast General's Cry, 30% on all Winter Axe Trolls. The permanent buffs are also applied to newly respawned Winter Axe Trolls, but don't apply to Resurrect or Korok the Blood Ranger. Notice the, the attack power given to the Winter Axe Trolls is twice as many ionization points as the spell damage and healing given to Winter Axe Trolls. This is because the Winter Axe Trolls are being balanced rather than having very few, rather having relatively few special abilities. Although, once I get around to actually defining their special abilities, I'll probably decrease the attack power, but not be, but not to 400 per stack. It'll be, uh, I don't know, maybe 600 or 700 per stack. But not 800, probably not 800 if I give, if I give them any special melee stealing abilities. They have stealing abilities that actually scale up attack power anyway. Once it's scale up attack power, the ones that don't scale up attack power, it doesn't matter how much you get attack power against them. Anyway. Resurrect, here are the Winter Axe, and Korok the Blood Ranger are found deep within different parts of Winter Axe Cave. Winter Axe Trolls will, by the way, Winter Axe Trolls is in the, uh, wet. To reach Winter Axe Cave, you go to the center of Voltrack Valley, and then go to the west. It's pretty much to the west, and you'll eventually run across Winter Axe Cave. Which is where the base of operations for the Winter Axe Trolls are. Winter Axe Trolls will drop armor scraps, Winter Axe Soldier Blood, Horde only, which can be used to summon the local Lord the Ice Lord, and Sword Crystals, Alliance only, which can be uh, which can be used to help summon Ivan the Forest Lord, Winter Axe, and Sol Winter Axe Soldier Insignia, Alliance only, which are used to do airstrike turnings, and Winter Axe Soldier Flesh, Horde only, which are used to do airstrike turnings. If your general dies, but Cork and Blood Ranger is not dead, then your faction will lose the 5% damage above Pokemon Rank 1 Insignia Quest. Quest, if applicable, and receive a debuff called Demoralize, which decreases all damage dealt and healing done by 
Deed Steba flies to the race of the Balgrad, persists through death, and is given to Fat Phil so they join afterwards. If Korok the Blood Ranger, also known as Korok the Ever Living, is slain, but I have generals yet to be slain, the Winter Axe Trolls will be afflicted by demoralizing until they resurrect Korok the Blood Ranger an hour later. If your general is dead, and two generals are still alive at that point, and then your faction kills another general, then you'll still lose the game, but your reputation gains will be reduced by half, excuse me, by, what, by 25% instead of being halved. Winter X trolls will typically be as powerful as level 65 man dungeon mods were in patch 1.12.2 outside of Darmal. So they're going to be uh, pretty tough to solo, but you should be able to do it with most classes. Uh, how about nearly? You know, I'm just going to leave it at like that. For a time being. It's, it's, it's headed to the power level. All winner axe trolls under the Core Cube Blood Ranger and Resurrect will reset their aggro table, which does not involve leaving combat, every 5 to 10 seconds at random, and they'll be vulnerable to all forms of crowd control that can affect players, so it'll be amazing times. That affects players, so it'll be amazing hand there. Most Winter Axe Trolls have various crowd control abilities, and some will spend most of their time healing Winter Axe Trolls, should any be within range be nearby and below half their health. Some of them, as in the ones that have healing spells. All track value now is a 50, 54, 55, 59, and 60 bracket. The 50, 54, 59 brackets NPCs will be easier to kill than before, and the level 60 NPC and the level 60 brackets NPCs will be harder to kill than before. NPCs in All track Valley, uh, easier to kill on average. Easier on average. Are on average. On average after to kill. Harder to kill on average. Because some NPCs in old in in because some of the NPCs in fifty one to sixty all track value are like level fifty or fifty one and some shit, and some of them are level sixty three raid bosses. The ones that were really low level will be harder to kill. Well, the ones that were higher level will be easier to kill in the 50 54 and 50 59 brackets. You know, I'm just going to rewrite this. For the NPCs that were of a low. All NPCs. And A B will be within a range of five levels. Will be level forty-eight to fifty-three. No, not forty-eight to fifty-three. Uh, fifty-two to fifty-seven in the fifty to fifty-four bracket. Level 57 to 62 in the 55 to 59 bracket. And level 60 to 63 in the 60 bracket. And the... Concerning difficulty... Changes from the old 51 to 60 AB bracket. NPCs, after having their levels raised as raised or lowered as specified, Hmm. 
Actually, instead of this, I'm going to write, and the 60 bracket NPCs will be significantly stronger than the NPCs in the 55 59 bracket, despite the difference of one level. Oh, not 60 to 60 gradient, 60 bracket. 58 to 60 gradient, 60 gradient. Okay. Copy. Paste. Define NPC levels in the three AV brackets. Non player characters in Ultra Act Valley are award one fourth as much experience as regular elite and non elite mobs in their level, less people K in Ultra Act Valley for the wrong reason. The water, when fished, will exclusively drop standard level 50 to 35 fish that are edible and do not grant well fed when eaten after cooking them in order to encourage people to actually do the objectives in All Track Valley. Polish armor will end early if you leave All Track Valley. Of course, by standard, I mean stuff like Spine Fin Halibut. Uh, excuse me, Raw Spotted Yellowtail and Bristle Whisper Catfish. But not Spike Van Halbert, that's level 45. Polish Armor, the buff, will end early if you leave Off Track Valley. Less people. Unintentionally be able to use and raise on just going to leave on ramp. You know what? So, less people unintentionally. Only be able to use it in raids, which would mean that I'd have to nerf it and classify it as a type A world buff. Classify it as type A world buff and nerf it. Massively nerf it. Well, I call it just a here. Copy. Paste. Type A mean a world buff that is not portable. Zin Fizlex will now supply the iron, mithril, and thorium for the player for Zin, for Zin Fizlex portable shredder because he's grateful for being safe in Winter Rock Trolls and he happens to have it on his person. However, he will not supply the steam saw because he doesn't have one, and his portable shredder unit will disappear into thin air, whatever he's in or not, if he leave All Track Valley. A very questionable change. The Alliance starting cable will move further south and be close to and a bit north of the Ice Wing Bunker Choke Point. The existing way out of Stonehurst Graveyard will be fully encompassed by a ramp in such a manner that you cannot enter the graveyard from the side, but can exit it from the side. That is, there will be a ramp there. That leads up from the flag to the side exit. And it's too high to be jumped to the top of from the side exit. Well, from the... Well, from the other side of the side exit. Another very questionable change. A new way out of Stonehurst Graveyard will be carved out of the mountain, leading upwards and north towards the Alliance's base. A line defection that holds the Stonehurst Graveyard to respawn on either side of the Icewing Bunker Choke Point. The zones nearby geometry might be changed to prevent people from slow fall jumping to the flag without going all the way around like they're supposed to. The first time any man in Old Track Valley finishes casting and channeling a hymn, ritual, rite, or boon, excluding ritual summoning and doom, all remaining generals will yell something, granting them and all their non-player characters, including those yet to spawn, plus 240 attack power, excuse me, 480 attack power, 120 spell damage, and 267 healing for the rest of the battleground, lest all track valley NPCs either not be strong enough for flask users or to be too weak for flask users. Copy. Peace. Double the AP given by the flask like buff that AV generals give their NPCs when someone uses a flask. Casts a flask enabling spell. Successfully casts. In a
yes, the hymns, rituals, rites, and boons are priest, warlock, shaman, and paladin spells that enable you that enable you to benefit from flasks. You can have flasks without the flask enabling spell, but it won't do anything except take up a buff slot and tick down the duration while you don't have the flask enabling spell on you. And these flask enabling spells exist in order to prevent people from using flasks in raids that have less than 40 people in them. In order to cut down a try In order to make tryhards force less stuff upon casuals. Outside of Fortnite. In order to undo a retcon, a few titanic relics can be found in all track valley, but they don't do anything and only modify the terrain by taking up space. Some of the quest text around the track valley will probably be changed to, to reflect that there are titanic relics in the valley, which the Frostwolf clan had not known about until they found out why the Stormpike Dwarves were digging around in all track valley. Uh, I got my hand dirty. I'm gonna go wash it. Aravi ba okay, I'm back. Aravi Basin changes shall award marks of honor based upon how badly you beat the other side or how badly you lost. As such, a, two a plus 2,000 wood will grant 11 marks. A plus 1,900 to 1,999 wood grants 10 marks. A plus 1,500 to 1,899 wood grants 9 marks. A plus 1,100 to 1,499 wood grants 8 marks. A plus 700 to 1,099 wood grants 7 marks. A plus 300 to 699 one grants 6 marks. A plus 1 to the 299 a plus 1 to 299 one grants 5 marks. A minus 1 to 99 the loss grants 4 marks. A minus 100 to 599 the loss grants 3 marks. A minus 600 to 1299 the loss grants 2 marks. A minus 1300 to 1799 loss grants 1 mark. And a minus 1800 to 2000 loss grants 0 marks. All Arafi Basin will apply zone wide debuff to all players until the game starts to prevent the use of Farsight, Eagle Eye, and Ornate Spyglass. This is to prevent people from scouting for pre maids in, in, in Arafi Basin. The water, when fishing, will exclusively drop standard edible level 15 and 35 fish and do not grant well fed when eaten after cooking them in order to encourage people to do the objectives in Arafi Basin, similar to Alfrak Valley. The Rafi Basin exit portals will be replaced with solid closed gates with which clip through the surrounding terrain and are not themselves walled off. To make sure that people get can't go through it and hide the flag there, and also cannot get mind control into it and exit the into, and exit the battleground through there. Wars on Gulch changes. Wars on Gulch marks of honor. Wars on Gulch marks of honor shall be awarded based upon your team's performance as such. 3-0 victory, 10 marks. 3-1 victory, 7 marks. 3-2 victory, 5 marks. 2-3 loss, 3 marks. 1-3 loss, 1 mark. 0-3 loss, no marks. 
And like an rock, like an rocky basin, the worst of all checks and portals to be replaced with solid closed gates, which clip through the surrounding terrain and are not themselves walled off. Blades are not with arms. Content editions. I might f try to make a Zara crater, but none of the Battleground exclusive rewards will be above my level 63. Rank 15 will be added to the game. More on this below. PvP reward changes. Rank 12 through 15 PvP tiles shall be the following. For the Alliance, rank 12 will be Lieutenant Marshal, rank 13 will be F Marshal, rank 14 will be Field Marshal, and rank 15 will be Grand Marshal. For the Horde, rank 12 will be General, Rank 13 will be War Master, Rank 14 will be Warlord, and Rank 15 will be High Warlord. All epic non all epic non mount PvP rewards from all battlegrounds will have the character level requirements and I levels lowered by two, from 65 to 63 I levels. Excuse me, from I level 65 to I level 63, and from character level 60 to character level 58. All revered, non-bagged, Alterac Valerie rewards will have the character level requirements and item level requirements lower by 2, again from character level 60 to 58, and item level 65 to 63. Lave the Life Giver will now grant Spirit Indie Place and Dispose to MP5. There is a such will not grant a less spell damage for healing, but also grant a bit of MP5. Tome of Arcane Domination will now grant Inks instead of MP5. Tome of Fire Arcana will grant somewhat less fire damage, but also grant one spell crit. Tome of the Ice Lord. Wait. No, actually, uh, this is actually from quite a few versions ago. The AV uh, Exalted Offhand Frills will be re-itemized and a nature damage one will be added to the game. Erosi Ultrack Valley Exalted will, will now also grant you a choice of I love 63 epic amulets of undetermined stats. That is, yet to be determined stats. Arafi Basin Exalted will not also grant you an item level 63 epic helm that's part of the Arafi Basin set of items, which is itemized like the resident set of items that it's a part of. This causes a 4P set post of some sort. Root Duty and Perfection will be changed to, instead of having level 20 and 40 versions, have level 28, 38, 48, and 58 versions. The Arafi Basin Revered Boots will no longer increase your movement speed reward, but their other stats will be increased accordingly. Because I'm getting rid of all sources of passive movement speed boosts, boosts that are not class specific and are available to players. So, of course, the uh, Pursuit of Justice, Paladin Tout will stay, Ghost Wolf will stay, Travel Form will stay, Feline Swiftness will stay, etc., etc. But movement speed to boots, Enchant, that's gone. The Rocky Basin Revered Boot. It's, uh, making it go faster. That is gone. And the, uh... What's it called? The Primal Backskin set bonus. That tank's gone, too. That increases your movement and swim speed. The insignia of the Alliance slash Horde will no longer require lifetime PvP rank or two or, of two or higher to wear. The oil will be required to buy from the non-Battleground PvP Quartermaster. And it can be purchased from any Battleground vendor if you're at least armed with that faction. This particular change was made because some people will be unwilling to pre-made, but should still easily be able to get the essential PvP trinket. Ooh, that pre-made word is very outdated. To do rated BGs. Because some people will not be willing to do rated battlegrounds, but should still be able to easily had ought to still easily be able to get the essential PvP trinket. Once you reach a given PvP rank, you'll always be able to buy, and as before, wear, the gear for that PvP rank, and you can still wear the gear if your rank decreases in stinging negatives later, should your server have 
negative PvP ranks. But you cannot buy it while your rank is in the negatives, and you cannot buy a bunch of PvP gear anyway if you lose access to the Austin's Barracks. This is so that players who reach a higher PvP rank but can't afford the gold for a new gear can buy the new gear later so long as that person can still, if necessary, access the Austin's Barracks. More negative PvP ranks in section number 5B, negative PvP ranks. All rewards offered by PvP ranks shall be as follows. Hmm. All rewards. Rank 1, to Bard. Rank 2, Faction Insignia Drinking. Rank 3, Blue Cloaks. Rank 4, Blue Necklaces. Rank 5, Blue Bracers. Rank 6, Access to Officer's Barracks, A to Bard, and, a, and an additional 5% discount on all goods and repairs from your Faction's NPCs. The discount only applies to Rank 6 and higher. Rank 7, Blue Weapons, Shield Slash Offhand, Class Trinket, and Set Ring Number 1, High Level 63. Rank 8, Blue Chest Armor, Held, Shoulder Armor, and Belt, High Level 63. Rank 9, Blue Boots, Pants, Gloves, and Set Ring 2, High Level 63. Rank 10, Battle Standard, Access to the Quest Chain that lets you purchase Epic Weapons and Ammo, High Level 63. Of course, the Set Ring 1 and Set Ring 2 from Rank 7 to 9 are set with each other. And only each other. They do not set with any other items. They are by themselves. Not of course, but yeah. Rank 11. Commander's Epic Mount. Access to the World Defense Channel. And an additional 5% discount on all goods and repairs from your faction NPCs. The discount and access to World Defense only apply to rank 11 and higher. So that combines with the rank 6, dis with the rank six discount to become a 10%. And this also stacks additively with the Honored and Exalted discounts of 5% each. At rank 12, you get Epic Weapons, Shield Slush Offhand, Cloaks, a Class Ranket, and it's set ring number 1, high level 65. This is all 40 man equivalent stuff. Rank 13, you get an Epic Helm, Shoulder Armor, Gloves, Braces, and Necklace, high level 65. Rank 14, Epic Chest Armor, Pants, Boots, set rank 2, and a belt. I buy level 65, and this is a bar. At rank 15, you get access to a pseudo... At rank 15, you get access to a pseudo-legendary weapon quest. That is, a quest for item level 60... For item level 71 epic weapons, which are essentially legendaries. Losing a PvP rank only quest will prevent you from completing the quest. And furthermore, you'll gain an you will gain an additional 5% discount on all goods and repairs from your faction's NPCs, which only applies to rank 15. The discounts only apply to rank 15. Some notes for these PvP rank rewards. A wide variety of items will exist for ranks, for ranks 3 and up where applicable. Expect healer items, damage dealer items, tank items, and offensive defenses and general purpose variants of these items, as well as hyper offensive and hyper defensive variants where they are allowed to exist. These set rings are two piece sets that set of each other. The rare and epic. Making a blue set and. And epic set. Copy. The rare and epic weapons will both include, among other things, wands and relics. Rank 10 and 14 melee 200 weapons will be available in speeds of 2.1, 3.0, and 3.9. As an exception, rank 10 and 14 polearms will also include a 3.2 speed hunter polearm, not replacing anything else. Rank 10 and 14 one-handed melee non-daggers will include will be available in speeds of 1.5, 2.2, and 2.9. Rank 10 and 14 melee daggers will be available in speeds of 1.3, 1.6, and 1.9. Rank 10 and 14 weapons will include find on pickup ammo. Although the rank base uh, I can say it's here. Copy. Although the 
rank based melee range ones, they'll not have crazy procs on them. Like, dungeon and, like, uh, 10 and 20 man rank gear and 40 man rank gear will, often. They'll be really slow, which is comparable with power to have a, which is comparable in power to having a crazy proc. Really fat. They'll be of uh, good weapon speeds, which is comparable to ha power to having a crazy proc. Copy. Or maybe I will give them crazy proc. I don't know yet. Ranks in 14 bows and guns will be available as int speeds of 1.6, 2.1, and 3.1. Ranks in 14 crossbows will be available in speeds of 2.1 and 3.1. The ranks in 14 trinkets are similar to the class specific trinkets found in Black Blood Glare, except that they have different uneasy effects, not like the rank 2 trinkets, and they, of course, are also unique items. The effects won't be much better suited for PvE and for PvP, nor vice versa. And the effects of each rank's trinket will be different and be and will be useful for all specs of the class. The belts, cloaks, bracers, necklaces, and trinkets are not part of a set of items. Or like that fine. The rank 15 weapon can be chosen for the legendary options, slow one and melee sword, fast gun, etc. That are there that there are from raiding, except the items all the same size of stats that exist in the rank 12 versions that don't hire amounts, and the free stats that exist on radio legendaries will also exist on rank 15 items. Each class so the free stats meaning the spell hit on Sulphuros, and the bonus armor and block value on the caster slash one on the Castle of Australia one hand mace and the feral attack power on the uh, one hand mace that's for some broken druids. So this except this will only be for druids. Because why the fuck would it some broken? Well, yeah, it'll be for some broken druids, whatever. Each class No, actually that's right. They'll be they'll all of them like not specific, I forgot. Yeah. Only the Feral Druid will have Feral Attack Power on it. Anyway, each class will get different rewards from the fake Ray 15 quest, such that when they get the rewards, they'll get all the weapons and shields that their class will care about, so loot for all three or more specs is covered by this quest reward. The quest reward. Each rank 15 weapon has its own. I forgot to delete this. The I love 63 epic weapon quests will consist of doing some objectives in battlegrounds. A lot of times, they can intentionally be very grindy in order to parallel getting something like a rude blood of Baron Riven there. The quest reward will not actually be a weapon. Replace that won't. Won't actually be a weapon. But instead be a token that you can spend at a vendor on a level 63 epic item. Each one will cost one of those tokens that cost and 40 of each mark of honor. And each selection of epic items will be limited to parallel selection of level 63 epic items and shields that the game offers from not PvP. From stuff that ain't PvP. Said vendor will also sell buy not pick up I love 63 epic, epic ammo for a base cost of two gold a stack, but it requires ranks in or higher to use. Copy. PvP ranks will have a reputation requirement of all in lines or horde capital cities for the sake of thematics as follows. Rank zero or higher requires friendly if you're a racist faction and neutral if you're other capital cities. The other capital cities. Rank 3 and higher requires friendly. Rank 6 with all capital cities. Rank 6, rank six and higher requires honored with all capital cities. Rank 11 and higher requires revered with all capital cities. And rank 14 and higher requires exalted with all capital cities. Being below your rank's minimum reputation of, e of any of the relevant factions will result in a demotion. 
Utter Battleground Vendor Changes. A major flaw in the game was how players so often use expensive consumables and backgrounds, which are just ugly head in classic, not flat, in vanilla classic, such as free action potions, goblin sapper charges, limited vulnerability potions, our grenades, so the, those weren't so expensive compared to the Thorium ones, flash bombs, all sorts of buff potions, magic dust, unconscious stig rats, flasks, and Thorium grenades. And even Thorium grenades. In order to solve this problem, I will, instead of, the, instead of making these be unusable in battlegrounds and have no effect in battlegrounds, do the opposite of what Blizzard did in arenas with the very crusade by adding more battleground only consumables. To this extent, battleground vendors will, at neutral and higher, sell non battle sell non buy sell battleground versions of very many consumable items that are not buy to pick up for five percent of the vendor value of their non battleground counterparts before discounts that act as their non battleground counterparts and are only usable in battlegrounds. These items will include the following Type B world buffs. They were off early when the battleground ends. Type B world buffs mean world buffs that are not portable. Such as Juju's and Blastoplant's buffs. Bandages and they'll also sell Battleground bandages and anti venoms. They'll also sell all consumable products of alchemy, including flasks, anthro alchemist only potions, see section number eight below alchemy for more details, but not the blood petals sprout in the eight to these maturation potions, unfortunately. Buffs provided by these wear off early when the battleground ends, and the healing slash mana slash rejuvenation potions will not be weaker or stronger than their non than their non PvP counterpart. In fact, they'll have the exact like, same statistics, except they'll sell vendor for less, buy for less, and be only usable in the battleground. All, they'll also sell all engineering consumables. Arcane bombs will, because arcane bombs will coincidentally cost less than ten silver per bomb before discounts. They'll also sell all sharpening stones and weight stones, including the elemental varieties. They wear off early when the battleground ends. Holy, they'll also sell. Holy Water, Stratholme, and Stormwind, and Stranglethorn Veil Holy Water. They also sell Thistle Tea, Magic Dust, Unconscious Stig Rats, and other consumables obtained from the world that are not covered above and can be obtained more than once per character, such as Whipper Tubers, Jungle Remedies, and Dark Runes, but not really sticky glue or strat dead consumables. Obviously, all these consumables will share cooldown of their PvE parallels or whatever they share a cooldown with. Dishonorable Kill Changes Dishonorable Kills shall reduce your reputation of your faction and its allies and Ravenhold by 25 per kill at all non-negative PvP ranks in order to discourage the killing of quest NPCs on PvE servers. Ever heard of a war crime? And that's it for section number 5 PvP. Cut. Paste. Revise. Section number five PVP. Uh, wait a second. One last thing I want to check here in the outline that I just remembered. No, I did not put a uh, colon there. Good. Copy. Paste. Okay, good. And I am now done revising this section.